All right, welcome to another episode of Mike's medium sized martial knife exploration journey. In a recent episode, we took a look at the Puma SGB Bowie, and I really like this knife and continue to really like this knife. I've been carrying it a lot, using it a lot. And, well, based on some wise words from Jorge Prina, which I'll get back around to, inspired me to get another model. Now, a quick note about the SGB series. This is their low-cost series. They make the blades, but then ship them to China for final assembly. And that brings the cost way down. The knives that are completely handmade in Germany are about four times the price. Are they worth it? Well, I've heard input from some of my viewers who say the handmade knives are beyond awesome, and some who say they're really not worth it. The SGBs are of much better value. But today, spoiler from the title, we're taking a look at the SGB Buffalo Hunter. Now, this is clearly a low-cost version of their much more famous and infamous White Hunter. And they call this their best-selling blade, but I've found almost no reviews of it online. So let's go ahead and take a look at it today. Coming at this one a little bit differently than usual. I've had this knife for, while well, I'm making this video, about a week already, and I've put it to a lot of use. Definitely going to talk about that in function and handling. So you're not seeing the out-of-the-box edge. Speaking of not seeing the out-of-the-box edge, when it came to me, the false edge, back at the clip point here, had about two millimeters of blunt, and yeah, I went ahead and put my usual choppy edge on it. So, shaving sharp out of the box, yes, we are talking about the same 4116 Mova steel like the other Pumas. They are proof tested at the factory, so there's a little dimple on one side of the blade. 257 HRC, my test files confirm, yes, they're in that range. Hollow ground, four millimeters thick at the spine, very, very keen slicey edge. Um, let's definitely talk about that belly against some cardboard. Um, yeah, just, just a great, it's just a great utility cutter. So let's go ahead and talk about specs, fit, finish, and then I'll do my usual impact and durability tests. Let's talk about the sheath. It's the same leather folded over taco style sheath as well, the one that came with the SGB Bowie. Seems to come on a lot of the SGB line. But there are some differences. One, obviously, the color, and that's because I, I paid a couple of extra bucks to get the micarta scale version. We'll talk about that in build quality, fit, and finish. But this version does come with a black sheath versus the brown sheath. But, okay, when I reviewed the sheath on the SGB Bowie, I described it as being very, very dry and not fitting the blade, well, very well at all. Now, since then, I have heavily treated this about four or five times with Aussie leather conditioner, broke it in, reshaped it by hand, fits the blade much better now. But, yeah, you're going to see I put a bit of a relief cut here as compared to the way it came with the factory because with this really narrow grip, and we'll talk about the differences in the grip profiles in fit finish handling, um, yeah, I just couldn't get enough fingers on this blade to get a positive draw. So cutting it back a little bit lets me get more fingers on there without reducing the retention that you're getting by having, well, the guard locked down into the sheath. But on this one, I'm going to say, for whatever reasons, the fit and the finish of the sheath um, fits the blade a lot better but in one way, maybe, maybe too well. Yeah, for the first couple of days until I forced break in, I was really struggling with getting the guard in and out of the sheath. Yeah, it was just kind of way too tight. Now, though, retention's pretty good. Got it to the point where I can get my thumb on that top lip here and just kind of push off, and it, it kind of pops in and out. 
with, yeah, really good retention. Now, both of these do come with, they call them tethered sheaths because they come with these, these thongs that have these little slip loops. You can loop over the grip, tighten down, have that extra security. So far, I haven't needed to use it. Now, over time, will this break in too much, get loose, get sloppy, become a, a dropping out risk? Maybe. But, all right, like the buoy sheath, the belt loop is kind of stiff and kind of small. Fits on a standard inch and a half belt, but not, not anything much bigger than that. And because of that, it doesn't really move with me. I'll talk about this in carry when I'm wearing it from the waist. So I've had to consider other ways to carry this knife because I really want to carry this knife. Let's talk about why. Specs, fit, finish, build quality. And yeah, I'm going to be drawing a lot of comparisons to the buoy because they certainly have a lot in common and, well, significant differences, especially in blade shape, which lend to some interesting differences in, shall we say, form to function that we'll talk about. But as usual, let me start with the price. Paid about nine ten dollars more for this one 88 us dollars currently at amazon compared to the buoy and i think that's because i upgraded to the micarta scales yes this does come in a version with jacaranda scales it's about the same price as, as this one i could have also upgraded for well significantly more money to stag decided to try out the micarta and as we'll talk about i'm, I'm actually really glad i did but we'll get to that now, other specs. There is an obvious difference in blade length and overall length. It's about three quarters of an inch shorter than the buoy at five and three quarter inches, 14 and a half centimeters. Blade width, however, with this recurved and pronounced belly, it looks like it would be much wider than the buoy. And I described the buoy as being very slender, almost kind of stiletto-like in certain ways. But when I measure it, uh, widest point is exactly the same at one and three sixteenths of an inch, three centimeters. As already mentioned, they're both four millimeters thick, full tang, same 4116 steel, same hardness, proof testing dimples on both for 57 HRC, same general fit finish of the blade where they're very nicely kind of brush finish with very clean lines, hollow ground, but not egregiously so. I don't really feel like it's going to wind up being fragile. I haven't done my impact and durability tests. I expect it will do just fine, just like this one did. Very sharp edge that has retained its edge with use very well so far. Yeah, I have added choppy edges to the clip points of both. This one did, as I mentioned, have two millimeters of blunt on the back, so that was a bit of a job, but I think it served it well, and we'll talk about that. But, all right, let's get down to the friendly end for a bit. The Buffalo Hunter is also a bit shorter down here. It's not immediately obvious, but if I'm measuring from guard to point, that's the, it was four inches. This is three and three quarters, so nine and a half centimeters. Now, I do have what I've described as medium width hands, even though my fingers are kind of short. If you have bigger hands than me, yeah, this might be way too tight. For me, this is just about perfectly hand filling. Overall length, therefore, about an inch shorter than the buoy, 10 inches, 25 and a half centimeters. But the weight, okay, this is where it gets kind of surprising. This is an ounce heavier than the buoy. 8.2 ounces, 232 grams with a point of balance. Okay, the buoy balance is right at the guard. This one balances about a centimeter below the guard. And I think the reason for the difference in weight and balance is because these scales are definitely even though they're a bit shorter, they're beefier. If you look at them side by side, yeah, they're, they're wider and also a bit wider front to back. Also more curved. Describe these as being very square and narrow on the buoy. Took me some getting used to, but after I did, I started to really like them. But this right out of the box, yeah, feels really good in hand. It's very nicely hand filling. Got some nice flare, some nice curve to it. Nice swell. We'll talk about that in handling. Same fit finish, though, on this end. Full tan construction, double pin. Now, the pins on this one are a little bit bigger than the ones on the buoy. Don't know how that equates to overall sturdiness. We'll see. 
You do have the brass Puma medallion on one side. This one, though, comes with a nice lanyard hole with a brass liner on it, so that's kind of a nice upgrade touch. But no seams, gaps, hot spots, ledges, anything very clean. And again, you might have some concerns with, okay, blade made in Germany, but final assembly in China. I think the quality is just fine. I do not have a fully handmade in Germany white hunter to compare it to. If you do, uh, definitely let me know about yours. If you happen to have both, give me a comparison. Maybe one day I'll, I'll get my hands on one. Who knows? But for now, we're going to focus on this one. And I'm pretty pleased with this one. Spoiler alert. Guard. Brass guard. Very cleanly fit. Very snug. No egregious gaps in it. Now, it's got that same kind of one-sided guard, but yeah, the buoy had that bit of an overhang partial guard on the back. Not enough to really get in the way, but this one, yeah, it's a very clean transition that allows me to slide my thumb nicely up onto, yeah, this one comes with a nicely jimped, generous thumb ramp. And combine that with the fact that, yeah, it does come with a finger choil at the base of the blade. I can get way up on this edge for close work. And we'll talk about that in utility use. But I have not run my impact and durability tests yet. I expected it to do just fine. So let me go ahead and roll that footage in. We'll talk about how it did. And, yeah, we'll talk about utility use and absolutely martial handling. Since we're doing things a little bit differently today, let me review the test results in reverse order of occurrence, starting with the chopping tests. Now, I fully admit that this knife, well, it's a bit shortish, but definitely lightish, probably not designed to do any chopping. And frankly, my tests are more about how the build and edge hold up to impact and how it translates that impact back into me, basically hitting stuff with it. Now I'm using a redwood board as well as a harder wood ash board for these tests and it bit into the wood pretty well. You could use it for a little bit of chopping in a pinch and it held together just fine, edge held up just fine and felt comfortable doing so. 
So I decided to take the risk into, well, don't do this at home territory. I didn't have any firewood left to baton through, but a new test I've been experimenting with is batoning a blade cross grain through a board, which is frankly insane. Great way to break a knife. But I decided to go ahead and take a risk with this against the Redwood, and yeah, it survived the test. Should I have done that? Probably not. Again, my tests are, are not extensive bushcrafting tests. I'm just trying to get a sense of how the build holds together, and also how it translates impact back into my delicate hands. So test before that was the carving and the slicing, and also all the things you didn't see. The utility use, the cutting the cardboard in the packaging and the paper, and I did a lot of food prep with it. I've used it to make several meals in the last week, and it's a great slicer for that. And against the two different grains of wood that I was using, yeah, it's a great carving tool. And also, all sorts of wonderful ways I can grip it for different applications. So yeah, very useful as a utility cutting and carving and shaving tool. And yeah, I haven't really had to refresh the edge at all. Speaking of edge and abusive insanity, the test before that was my bamboo test, striking the blade at different angles into a piece of hard bamboo to see if I can intentionally induce a chip or a roll. In the reverse grip and the forward grip, and yeah, it survived just fine which gets us to, well, the most martial of the tests, thrusting and stabbing into my Pell, stab him, which is several layers of thick cardboard backed up by a couple of inches of compressed brown paper bag, paper backed up by wood. And given how well broad that tip looks, penetration was really impressive, but more so, it made really wide holes. It really cut its way into that Pell. So yeah, we're definitely going to talk about that in my martial impressions. Now, I stabbed and thrust into the Pell in a forward grip with the blade facing away from me and towards me, which does change the angle that the tip engages with the target. And then the same in the reverse grip. Blade away from me, blade towards me. And the only place I had, I didn't have any discomfort, the only place I had any slippage was in reverse grip with the blade facing towards me. Yeah, since there's no guard at all on the back, it did ride up under impact to a, about there, which is a little worrisome, but it, it didn't really go any further than that. I had, to, I had to readjust my grip to kind of back it off a few times, but I didn't really feel at risk that my hand was going to slide up onto the blade, and the tip held up just fine. So let's go ahead and talk about my martial impressions, and as I mentioned, some wise words from Jorge Prina. Not going to go down to the unflattering waistline view because it's the holiday season and carbs are not my friends, but mostly don't have a whole lot to cover down there. Worn from the belt loop, yeah, I've got it to the point right now that a good solid tug will break that retention, but it did take a while to get there. As I mentioned out of the box, ridiculously snug, but this is not my favorite way to carry it. I've been trying to wedge that sheath into my belt or waistband Facone carry style, usually about 4 o'clock, but taco style sheath in a big belt loop makes that pretty awkward. I really feel like this knife needs, deserves a slim inside the belt, inside the waistband sheath or scabbard, and I'm probably going to make some designs for several knives that fall into... All right, finally, let's get around to what were... Mr. Prina's wise words that have inspired me and, and might influence the direction of my journey going forward. The question before him, what makes the best martial knife? And his answer, very similar to what's been said about, shall we say, certain other kinds of defensive tools, it's the one that you have on you when you need it. But he took it a step further, saying it's the one that you have on you most of the time that you use for the most things because it's also, therefore, going to be the one that you're most familiar with and most comfortable with. And yes, most knives are fundamentally tools, and a lot of them could be applied to martial defensive purposes in an emergency. And in your real life, other than martial training, hopefully, well, which one do you use it for the most? Or hopefully you never use it for defensive purposes in real life at all. Hopefully that never happens. So yeah, and that made me think about what makes a good utility knife that also for me makes a good martial knife. 
So let's talk about that. Just a few more quick points of comparison and contrast between the SGB buoy and the Buffalo Hunter. For carry optics, they both have hilts that look very kitchen knife tool like and the sheaths do cover up the shiny guard bits. So in carry they look more like tools and less like weapons to eyes that are sensitive to that sort of thing. So you're likely to get a little less of that uncomfortable attention if that's an issue but we're definitely going to cycle back around to that. Now when it comes to the buoy, I described the long slender blade and the feel and the balance as being an interesting hybrid between buoy and stiletto. But when it comes to Buffalo Hunter, this is getting back into slicey buoy category. That belly, it's, it's almost kukri-like. So slashing and hewing cuts from a full grip, yeah, really, really nice. I can, I can get nice and high on it in a hammer grip, lock my thumb, lock my finger, however I want for those, that close work, both utility and martial wise. But I have just enough room down on that grip that if I slide down it's less than a centimeter, really, hook my hand on the bottom hook, yeah, I get more in a handshake grip so I can snap cut. And yeah, this is very quick, very nimble, very responsive, very effective for doing that. Despite its weight and its size, it, it bites in a good way. But thrusting, all right. I expected this tip being so broad to not be very good at penetrating. But what it acts like is just a bigger knife. Penetrates very deeply into my pal and makes some really impressively large holes. Really cuts going into the media. So if I flip it around edge towards me North American buoy style to get more of that cutting action and straighter angle of attack, yeah, that's really effective. Plus now I have a sharpened clip point, so I can, I can do those kind of hooking cuts with the blade facing away from me. Yes, I can back cut with it. Now it doesn't have enough length and enough inertia uh, or enough guard that I feel like I could do any kind of parrying with it. So my tactics are going to be mostly evasive and relying on what the rest of me is doing or pairing it with something in my other hand. There's some possibilities there. But same, same for hitting with the flat. Uh, hitting with the spine, uh, mostly I'm just going to be engaging the target with the back of the tip anyway if I try a movement like that. So there's still something there. It's still effective. doesn't give me quite the range of you know, short sword sort of tactics that the bigger knife gives me, but yeah, still a lot of potential in this blade all around. Speaking of all around, let's talk about reverse grip, which means we got to talk about transition. All right, balance and how tapered it is at the top does indeed tempt me to finger twirl the thing, fidget spin with it. It's a bad habit that I've been engaging in for many decades. Uh, I don't recommend it. It's not very secure, but this knife does it pretty well, feels pretty good doing it. But pinch flipping. All right, I have a tactile indexing point just like on the SGB buoy in that medallion. And because the grip isn't very long and there's nothing really in my way here at the butt end, yeah, even my stubby little fingers can pinch flip it, transition it very smoothly. So that feels good, moves well, feels reasonably secure. I might put a little flare down here to grab my hand a little bit better. Haven't done it yet. My carta is a workable material if I need to do some reshaping. But yeah, that's nice. And in the reverse grip, okay, edge away from me. Again, that belly. Boy, is that a slicer. Hooking action with the tip, especially with the back of it sharpened. Yeah, very effective. If I flip the edge towards me, so I mentioned under impact it was, it was sliding up in my hand a little bit, but not so far that I felt like I was going to wind up with my flesh on the blade. But that gives me a much straighter stab with more cutting action going into the target. Plus I've got this back cutting action with the edge and enough sharpness on that clip point to do almost kind of karambit style actions there. So variety and comfort, maneuverability, yeah, this for me is a confident martial tool as well as an awesome utility tool. So it meets Jorge Prina's, well, prerequisites for what makes a best knife. Except, all right, I've mentioned this 
a lot in other videos that I happen to live in an area of my country where carrying any kind of fixed blade knife in public is highly restricted. So yeah, I've been carrying this and using it around the house, around the property, but it has not been going out into the world with me. What kind of knife gets to go out in the world with me? Spoiler alert for where we're going next. Yeah, big Marshall folders. But until then, if you have any questions about this knife or happen to have this or other Puma or Puma SGB products, you happen to have the White Hunter. Tell me what you think about that. Any other recommendations? Keep them coming. But yeah, we might be leaning a little bit more into, again, more utility versus short sword for a bit. The medium sized Marshall Knife Journey versus the big Marshall Knife Journey. Depends on what catches my eye. Kind of fickle that way. Otherwise, as always, thank you all so much for watching, following my journey, putting up with my madness, subscribing to the channel, liking the videos, and I hope to see you all back for, all right, we're going to be talking about large and XL cold steel folders.